Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of Family Issues. In this episode, we'll be discussing the learning skills. We all learn, it's not just the children. We'll be focusing, of course, on uh, how to uh, enhance um, the learning skills of our children, how to discover uh, their uh, talents and their strengths and to uh, uh, how to develop it and uh, how to um, let our children uh, choose freely uh, um, the, the way they want to um, uh, advance. But again, the learning skills are not just for uh, the, the children. Uh, we all keep learning every day, um, young and old alike. Uh, so we will be uh, discussing what is the perfect state for learning, uh, how to get in that state, uh, do we all learn the same way? That's a question mark, and the answer is definitely no. Uh, what are the different styles of learning? How can we use the learning styles to improve the way uh, we learn? Um, we'll also be uh, tackling the uh, types, different types of intelligences uh, and uh, how to uh, benefit from uh, the type of intelligence you own. Um, and how can we uh, improve our memory and also uh, the different types uh, of uh, memories. That's all in the uh, upcoming hour, uh, insha'Allah. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِ عِلْمًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ العظيم. Uh, we, we, are, we, we are all instructed to uh, pray to Allah the Almighty that He give us uh, more uh, knowledge. Uh, and again, uh, the learning skills is our topic, um, not just for the children, but young and old uh, alike. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِ Amin. We'll be taking um, a short break and then come back and introduce you uh, to our uh, distinguished guests here. Uh, don't forget that you can call us uh, live uh, on the phone numbers um, that uh, should be uh, appearing uh, on the screen. We'll be happy to receive your phone calls, your questions and your uh, remarks. Uh, and we will also uh, be uh, gladly receiving your emails if you have any comments uh, or suggestions to family uh, issues. Stay with us. We'll be back momentarily, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. You are never alone. You are never on the righteous companions. You've seen him on the inevitable journey. We want the Muslim home to be a Muslim home. You have 30 episodes to teach us how to build a better future. Ready, set, go. And all of, all of these are ideas. Yeah. We got to be creative. What are our tools? Bubblegum, Mickey Mouse, Starbucks, American movies, foreign films. Is this going to produce a good generation of Muslims? In order to produce that generation Malik, yes. there are three institutions. That generation, we want to produce that generation to be those men. Sisters, go back to the religion, go back to your deen. We're talking about the next generation. You're going to hear me say that phrase a lot, the next generation. I'm not talking about Star Trek. They had this chart shake that had, it shows a small monkey and then like a, a bigger monkey and a bigger monkey. That new generation, that better future. Even in the West, they say a family that prays together stays together. As this, what is the Sunnah? Sunnah is actually the method or the way or the practice of Salah Salah. In this new edition, we will tackle many Sunnah. And I'll start, inshallah, with the sunnah of the wudu. That we Muslim, as we also commanded by Allah and the Messenger of Allah to take care of the Quran, follow the Quran, and implement the Quran, 
we also been commanded by Allah and the Messenger of Allah to implement and follow the Sunnah. Some of the people said, what does it make different whether I drink with my right hand or right hand? The difference is you are disobeying Rasulullah So it is also a very recommended Sunnah. One of the obligation on me as a Muslim toward my brothers is to visit him when he's sick. You know, believe it or not, Rasulullah taught us everything, even how do we go to the toilet. The sunnah of sneezing that when you sneeze, you should cover your mouth and nose with your cloth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, time now to introduce you to our dear guests, uh, Dr. Muhammad uh, Tariq, personal uh, development coach. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being uh, with us. And um, the learning skills. Uh, we all learn, right? Yeah. What, what is different, and we all continue to learn as we, we grow older. Um, first of all, ca can I start by asking you, uh, uh, what is the difference between um, uh, a, a child's uh, uh, learning process and an adult's uh, learning uh, process? Yeah. Well, actually, the, as a child, the main motive for me to learn is curiosity because I, I've seen, um, I see a lot of things that I don't understand. I see my parents doing uh, things that I don't know how to do. So my main motive is curiosity. I'd like to, do, to try new things. I'd like to know things that I don't know uh, how to do. As an adult, usually uh, my main motive is, is not a self-motive. I have to learn because of my job. I have to learn because of my studies. So it's kind of I'm forced to learn. That's mm -hmm. why kid when, uh, kids, when they are learning, it's full of fun. It's full of uh, joy. And they actually learn quite well. They learn better, much better than adults. Because mm. uh, adults, the process of learning for most adults, if they don't know how to do that, there is no any kind of joy or fun in that. Actually, it's a very hard process and they, something that they try to avoid as much as they can. All right, w with the exception, of course, of those scientists. Yeah. Who, uh, I mean, where curiosity is one of their main um, uh, characters. Now, you said uh, that usually the, the adults are uh, forced to learn, uh, unlike children, but unfortunately, nowadays in some educational systems spread, uh, especially in the developing world and uh, in many uh, of our Arab and, and, and Muslim countries, the... Um, uh, the education system itself seems to be one that forces you to learn instead of um, uh, make you want to learn. Is, is that true? And, mm -hmm. and uh, how does this negatively affect the, the learning skills of, uh, of children? Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, it's not limited to, to our area only. It's, uh, it's worldwide. And people... Uh, Even in the developed world. Yeah. So in the developed world, they notice that and they try to improve this area because they know that the child... Uh, if you force a child to, to learn something, he will not learn it as, uh, as he learned it when he has a self-motive. So when you go to school and now you have a fixed time to learn math and you have a fixed time to learn science, you are actually forcing your child or you're forcing your kid to learn. So there are new systems now where they let the child learn whatever he wants to learn. Uh, of course, you have to regulate that process. Uh, otherwise, uh, your child might not learn uh, important stuff that you need him to learn. But it's very important to, to make it a, a very uh, entertaining process and a process that I don't feel that I'm doing effort Actually, I'm playing. Mm. So instead of doing homework, as mm. we used to say, it's actually more of like play work. Mm. Okay, or I'm mm. doing, I'm doing some. Uh, I'm not working. I'm playing. I'm enjoying mm. the process. I'm discovering new things that I'd mm. like to discover. Right. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that the motive usually for for children is uh, is curiosity. So that means that mm -hmm. if we as parents force the kids or or pressure them uh, at home that you have to be number one, you have to. Um, to 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 to, um, to be better than all of uh, of your peers, then this is usually not not uh, um, a right approach. But from the other side, it's it's important because these things live with you. If you if you from from your very young days 
uh, uh, get used to being the the leader, the 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 best achiever. Usually, this lives with you while you grow older. So, how do we tackle this? I mean, how do do we balance uh, this? Well, it's good uh, that you mentioned this earlier. Uh, so it's important to, to become like a leader or to, to get good grades in, in uh, certain areas of life. But why do we focus only on studying and learning? So the child can learn to become the best or learn to improve himself in, in many areas. Why do we always tend to, do, to always uh, want our child to be the number one in school? Mm. That's good for parents. They feel good about themselves when mm. their child uh, becomes the first one or mm. the best one in the school. But actually your child... He don't need to do that because one child can be very good in math, another one can be very good in science, another one can be very good in, si in sports. Mm. So I don't have to force him to be good in something because if I let the child to act naturally, usually what will happen is I'll discover what he's excelling in. Mm. And by discovering that, uh, I can help and guide my child to excel in what he can really uh, achieve and get mm. good results in his life. I have a sense you're getting us to the areas of uh, different types of uh, intelligence and, mm. and, and, and how to uncover them and, uh, uh, and develop them. Uh, but then again, it's amazing to hear most of the uh, 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 parents talking to their children that they all used to be the, uh, the leaders in their schools. <laughs> so we don't know who yeah. are the laggards. Yeah, and, and until, until you see the results right. <laughs> and discover that's not true. Right. Actually, by forcing them uh, to and putting pressure on them, you're not putting them in the best state for learning. Mm. The best state of learning is a state where I'm very relaxed, I'm very uh, attuned to what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just doing it naturally. I'm so, having fun while, yeah, while, I'm, having while fun. I'm studying. And this is very important. If I'm not in the best state uh, for learning, usually mm. what I'm in is a st stressful state. Mm. If I'm in a stressful state while I'm learning, mm. all my knowledge is gone. Mm. That's a very common experience for many people who they study quite well, and mm. when they enter the exam, they forget everything. Mm. Because now we have, if to simplify it, we have two parts of the brain. One who's uh, more interested in keeping you safe, so, so we call it the survival part of your, of your brain. Another one is uh, the thinking part of your brain. And when you're on an exam, you have to use the thinking part, the one that got all the knowledge, got all the information. Mm. Mm. But when you feel threatened, or you feel that there's stress or something that's not right, mm. actually the part that's thinking and taking over is the survival part. There is no information in that part. There is no useful uh, knowledge in that part. It's only what the main job of this part is to make sure that you're safe. Mm. So what, what happens is, is during the like hour or two of the exam, your mind is making sure that you're safe. Mm. But you don't have any knowledge to to write in the exam. Y you said you're going to be stressed. So and that's why we see that usually girls or females uh, uh, suffer more stress. You, you see them breaking down sometimes in, uh, when it comes to the final test or, or yeah, well, are, we, yeah. are we now generalizing. <laughs> yeah, or generalizing? Well, I don't want to generalize here, but mm. yes, uh, at a young age, usually uh, girls, uh, young girls, they are more sensitive, they are more emotional, which is something good, it's not bad. So they tend to break down easily. Uh, but at the same time, you will find many young kids, boys, who will suffer the same thing. Mm. So the th thing here, or what we want to do, is to train our child that it's fine. Whatever you do, it's just an exam. Mm. It's not a big deal. Mm. Of course, I want him to do uh, good, uh, get good results, mm. but it's not like a matter of life. Mm. Many parents, they do it as if, if you don't get that grade, I don't want to know you again. Mm. Or your life depends on that grade. Mm. By doing that, you're actually helping a kid to get lower results. Mm. And even if they get higher results, you're putting stress that's not useful at that age. Even if you're uh, an adult, mm. it's not useful to put stress on yourself. I, I, I want to get back to that, but <laughs> let's uh, again go back to, to, to what I was saying about the, um, the amazing fact that all of the parents used to be number one <laughs> in their school. But isn't it also from, a, from another point of view yeah. positive to, uh, to give your child a, a role model to look after? And, and I mean... If you were number 10 out of 30, then you were still from the, the, the first batch, if we can say so. So you're not lying when you, when you say that, you know, I, I used to excel in school. Mm -hmm. And so it's part of also giving the role model. What, what about this, um, this idea of, of, of parents giving? How important is it to, to mm -hmm. give their children uh, the role model? Well, it's very important because kids, very young kids, what they do is they model their parents. 
So they look around and see what's important to their parents and it's important to them too. Uh, so it's good is as, if, uh, as long as it's done in a positive way. But if it's done in a very negative way and a lot of pressure that's not necessarily done on the kids, then that's not what we're looking for. Because scientific research is proving now that many kids who are very successful in school, mm. when they finish school, college, now they are not successful in life. Mm. So what's more important, to have a kid that's very good in school but not successful in life, or a kid that's doing quite well in school, but at the same time is very successful by, uh, was, uh, in social life with others, uh, dealing with other people. So it's very important to focus on priorities, and it's also very important to have this idea in mind that's, that exams are just feedback. Right. It's just feedback. So this time I did good, good. Next time I didn't do quite well, so... I ask myself, how can I improve? It's not a big deal. Mm. But, but back to, again to the idea of pressuring uh, uh, the kids. Um, you said that it's not good to, to, to stress them out. But what if you know that your child, or uh, you assume uh, that, that your child, and with, with logical mm -hmm. uh, um, um, uh, reasons, that he, he is smart? Mm -hmm. and, and you know that he is, but you don't find him giving enough effort. And we see a lot of cases like this. Very brilliant children, but they don't want to study. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to do their homework or their, their home play, if, <laughs> uh, as you said. Uh, yeah. you know, um, uh, so so what, what do you do in, the, in that case? Yeah. Well, the He's a fast learner or she's a fast learner, mm -hmm. but he or she just doesn't sit down for, for 10 or, uh, or 15 minutes to do the... Uh, uh, the work needed to, to, to develop uh, the skills uh, Allah has already given him mm -hmm. or her? Uh, well, the thing here is uh, school only measures two kinds of intelligence. As we'll talk later, we have many types of intelligence. So if my, I know my, quite well that my kid is very intelligent, maybe he's intelligent in areas that's not related to school. So I don't have to stress myself, but I, at the same time, I have to motivate my kid to learn. Because mm. learning is good uh, if it's done in, a, in the right way. So instead of forcing it to my kids, uh, I can be smart and make my kid interested in learning that. Mm. So the way to do the, this is to make my kid, uh, to raise his curiosity, to uh, give him motives to learn that. Because young kids... Motives like what? Like presence and Could and be that like or that a reason why to learn. Because mm. many kids, they ask you, why do I learn... That. So what's the best answer for that from the point of view of a personal development coach? Okay, is to say the right and accurate answer because many times in school uh, kids ask, why do we learn math? And parents usually reply, so when you're in the supermarket, you can't calculate the numbers, which is a good answer. That's the most common yeah, answer, right? For that age. Mm. But later when they go to advanced math and they go to calculus and, uh, and uh, geometry, they say, I'm not going to use that in the supermarket. And the motive goes down. Mm. So you have to give the right answer that they can understand. They have to have the right motive. They have to have the self-initiated. Which is, say, for a, for a 10-year-old? So what are they learning? What, what's the topic? It's based on the topic. So mm. I see the topic and I see the benefits in, in life. I see practical things that uh, I'm doing now quite say well. Ma say math. Say math. Okay. What, what, what's the best answer? Because you get this question a lot from Yeah. From so it children. could be that you can calculate things. You c it could be that you know how to save your money. It could be that uh, by, which is actu actually true, by uh, learning math, you're actually increasing your intelligence, which is very true. So I can give them many reasons mm. that applies to them. But mm. if I tell them something that they don't understand or they mm. are not interested in, mm. uh, by learning math, you'll get good grades at the end of the year and I'll be happy. Mm. No, that's, that, that, that's not enough. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what about saying uh, it's because if you do this, it's mo it's most probable that those who are mm -hmm. uh, successful in school are the ones who are successful in their jobs, and that means you will be somebody. You will appear on TV. People will point to you. Mm -hmm. You will be rich. You will you'll be able to help the poor. Is that uh, can I, I a ten year old abs ab ab yeah. absorb yeah. this? Yeah. I, I do we underestimate sometimes the intelligence yeah. of of, of the youngsters, can it, is that an acceptable answer to a 10-year-old say? It's acceptable, as, but it's not quite true because mm -hmm. uh, we have seen many people who are not successful in school, yet when they finished school, they were successful in their life. But I can uh, build their motive by, uh, by showing them scientists, role mm -hmm. models, people that they look up to. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they want to say, I would like to be like that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be like this person. Mm -hmm. 
And this is a very good motive because... But statistics still show that yeah. those successful in school are generally more successful in, 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 in their practical careers than, than the others? Uh, currently, it's the opposite way. Uh -huh. if, uh, so I'm not saying that if you're successful in, in your school, you're not do uh, quite well in your right. life. But mm. I'm saying that it's not necessarily a rule. Mm. Actually, if you've seen like Einstein, mm. if you've seen uh, right. many of the examples, ma many of the brilliant people you see around, they were not successful in school. Mm. So that I'm not saying that if you're successful, you have no chance. But actually, I'm saying that if you're not successful, you still got chances to be very successful in your life. Right. And, and you talked about the, 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 the different types of intelligence. Yeah. So let's start from, from, from scratch. And, and maybe this is something most parents um, mm -hmm. uh, care about most uh, when it's exam time when, and we are uh, entering exam times here uh, uh, yeah. in our region. Um, what is the perfect state for learning? How do we get, do we get our kids uh, in a mind that is ready to, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so to learn? The perfect state is a state where I feel relaxed. I feel that I'm open to receive new information. Uh, I feel that I, I'm interested in learning. So this is the perfect state. How can I get into that state? Well, we have many ways. One of the ways is to ask yourself, uh, how do you relax? Because usually... Uh, each person got their own way to relax. One of the ways that we use for everyone is to remember a time when you felt relaxed, you felt open to learning, you felt that you're learning new stuff very easily, and remember that time and go back to that time and see what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel that feeling you heard that time. What you're doing now is you're actually accessing that feeling you felt before. Because any, everyone, any kid you find, you find that they have a subject that they love to learn, they love to study, and other subjects that they hate to learn, they hate to hear its, its name. So what I want to, to do here is I would like to access the state they have when they are thinking or studying the subject they love and use it to, for all the subjects they have, even the ones they hate. By doing that, I'll change the way they perceive the subject. Because many times I'm not doing well in a subject or two or maybe many because I have associated a negative feeling or negative, uh, negative emotion to that uh, subject. I did that because maybe the first time I learned that topic, the teacher was not a positive mm -hmm. one. Or I was, personally, I was not in a, post a positive state. Mm -hmm. So I associ associated the negative state I had with that subject. Mm -hmm. That association will last with me for my whole life. So even if I finish school and go to college, I still hate math, if that's a uh, subject I hated. Even after I finish college, I still hate math. So by changing the way I perceive uh, the topic or getting into the right state, I'm actually open to receive the information. I'm open to get better results. And, and, and you're here, uh, I guess, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Tar uh, pointing to something important, which is the relationship between the student and and the teacher, and, mm -hmm. and I assume that, that parents at home, especially those who help in uh, um, uh, uh, their kids in, in, in their studies, are also considered sub-teachers, if, if we can say so. So what is the ideal relationship between well, the student and teacher? Well, the ideal relationship is encouragement. Um, I'm supporting, I'm helping you. So I'm not here to point your mistakes only. Of course, I'm here to show you when you're doing something wrong, but I'm here to show you that you're doing good, I'm doing, uh, you're doing right, I'm here to uh, make you focus on doing the thing right, I'm not here to, f to make you focus on the problems. So, for example, um, this is the wrong way to give uh, feedback when someone does something wrong, that's totally wrong. You never do it wrong, uh, right. You not, you'll not be able to succeed in your life. So some people, uh, parents and teachers, they think that when I tell my kids something like that, I'm actually encouraging them. Actually, for kids, that works the opposite way, even for adults. Mm. So the right way to give a feedback is to focus on the overall positive thing. So I start first by saying, you did that very good. This time, you, you were able to calculate the numbers very quickly. Okay? Then I give the, the feedback that ne needs to change. You missed this point, and you missed that point. But overall, you are very good. So we call that a feedback sandwich, where we say positive things, then we say the feedback, then we say positive things. So the kid is very happy the, because he's focusing on the positive things, but he also got the message what needs to be improved. Mm. As opposite of saying, ah, that's totally wrong. Mm. You really didn't do it right. Well, what about rewards and punishments? Mm -hmm. I mean, how effective are they? And very effective. Mm. So 
some kids, uh, we call that the carrot and the stick. Okay, uh, mm. most kids, uh, they have both. But uh, some kids, they have one uh, is Strongly more... The, yeah. It's more effective yeah. than yeah. the so other. So the carrot, they, they like to, when they do something right, they, they like to get rewarded. Mm. The stick, if you don't do that, you will get punished. Mm. Okay. Uh, you're not going out tonight. Yeah. You're, you're not seeing your friends. You're not going to play with your video games. Yeah. Mm. Just a tip here for parents to, to use that. Uh, make it relevant. So make the feedback relevant. So if you are punishing uh, the kid or uh, giving him a reward, make it relevant to what he's currently learning. And make it something small, not a big deal. So if I, uh, that applies for the word and the punishment. Mm. So if it has to be small. Uh, it, it better be small. Yeah, right. yeah, that's the right Because word. if you go with big rewards or big punishments, you have uh, uh, no way back. After, I mean, no way to retreat or no way to, to adjust if exactly. you want to adjust. Yeah, exactly. Right. So whenever he do something right, uh, uh, positive feedback could, could be by, or uh, like uh, a reward could be by saying a positive thing. You don't have to give uh, something physical. Right. But by saying that you're great today, you're very good today, mm. that's actually a reward. Mm. And if you give something physical or if you make a punishment, mm -hmm. uh, it should be, again, a, a small one. Yes, and I prefer that it's agreed upon before uh -huh. the task. So the kid know, uh, knows okay. the consequences of what he's going to, to be doing. So okay. if I don't do that, I know what's going to happen. So I don't get surprised. All right. By the punishment. All right. Um, uh, Dr. Tar allows to get in uh, sure. uh, Brother Muhammad from Egypt. Assalamu uh, alaikum, uh, right. Brother Muhammad. Thank you for calling us. Jazakumullah khairan for this interesting episode. Actually, I'm a big fan of uh, Muhammad, Far Far Muhammad Tariq. I follow him in Facebook and uh, in a lot of cha other channels, actually. Uh, I have a question about uh, learning and specialization. Because yes. I believe that uh, in order to achieve a good uh, rank in, in learning, you have to be specialized in something. However, I believe that life is too short to be specialized in one field. Mm -hmm. So I can't always compromise. I want to study plenty of, of stuff, and uh, in, at the same time, I want to learn uh, to be advanced in one specialization. So uh, can you help me in solving this uh, dilemma? <laughs> All right, Brother Muhammad, thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, Jazakumullah khair. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for this question. Actually, there's a saying that says, learn everything about something and learn uh, something about everything. Mm. So I learn uh, whenever I, uh, I'd like to start learning my, uh, uh, or my life and learning. Uh, I focus on a topic and I, I try to learn everything about that topic. And actually, that's not possible. Because after I finish learning everything, there will be more information about that topic. So I just keep learning and learning and learning about that topic. I try to learn everything as much as I can about that topic. And at the same time, I try to learn something about everything in life. Because if I just focus on one topic, um, that will not be good for me. And actually, that will not be good for my brain. My brain is, uh, there are many functions for my brain. And by actually learning many topics, I'm enriching my brain. I'm empowering my power of brain. All right. So, so, so the balance is by... Uh, yes, choosing the topic uh, of your specialization and, mm -hmm. and, and dedicating, uh, say, half of your time to that topic, but the other half, say, to the uh, other tops, topics in life that you want to know, so, or, or you must know something about, yeah. or you should know yeah, something probably about. Probably it would be more than half for the topic you are for specialized the main one. in. Okay. Yes. And it's the, a very important point to make here that uh, currently in our life, it will not be one topic that you'll be specialized in. Mm. Recently... Uh, there are many changes, and most people will change career several times in their life, mm. as opposite to like 20 or 30 years ago, where I just start a career and stay in that career till mm. I finish my career. Very true. So currently, we, we tend to change several careers, and we tend to do many things. Uh, because of the way things develop, and because of the way uh, new knowledge starts to enter our world, uh, probably will be specialized in many topics, not just one topic. All right. Very clear and very important as well to, to highlight indeed. Now, Dr. Tar, we definitely don't learn all the same way. So uh, uh, what are the different styles of, uh, of learning and, and how to, uh, to, to discover that this suits uh, um, uh, the, this boy or, or that system suits this girl and so mm. on? Yeah, so we have three main uh, styles for learning. The first one is visual. People who tend to learn by seeing, seeing, uh, seeing things. 
and then we have auditory people who learn by hearing and then we have kinesthetic kinesthetic people tend to learn by doing so the main three styles um, we all use the three styles but we have one that's dominant so if I have the visual uh, style usually I will tend to sit in a place in the classroom where I can see the teacher uh, clearly maybe it's in the front row maybe it's uh, uh, very near the teacher so I have the best view and I tend to learn by seeing things so if I see videos that will be very good if I see colors in my notes that will be very good for me uh, so the main part here for me for learning is to use the visual part that's for the visual and then the auditory the auditory, uh, auditory tends to learn by hearing so he might be sitting at at the end of the class but he's listening carefully to the teacher and he's interested in every word the teacher is saying and he's making note of uh, the words the teacher is saying that's the auditory start then we have the kinesthetic the kinesthetic it's very important for the kinesthetic is to to do things practically so if I'm learning math uh, the kinesthetic person will need to try to solve that equation and maybe do one and two and three to make sure that he quite understand uh, very well the, the topic is learning uh, as I said we all have the three styles but we have one that's dominant we all have one that's dominant it can't be like 33.33% .33 for each one of the... <laughs> Even the if it's 33.3%, then we will have one that we prefer more. Okay. Okay. What I... Um, I, ca I can't tell which one of the three I prefer mo more, by the way. Okay, because you do the three. Right. And that's what I want... Well, you said we all do the three. Yes. So... Uh, not all of the time. So most of the time, under stress, people tend to go to the style they prefer. Okay, so for example, uh, if mm. I'm uh, a visual student, I'll mm. be sitting in a place where I can see my, my teacher. Usually, uh, visuals don't li uh, like to do it physically. Mm. So if, uh, th that's very funny. Visual students will be sitting in the classroom and they will be watching the teacher and say, ah, I, I got that. Mm. And the teacher will say, would you like to try it? And so, I don't know, I, I understand it very well. Mm. And till they enter the exam and then they discover that they don't uh, quite uh, well know it. Mm. Okay. Visual, when they remember uh, or they try to remember the question, they actually sometimes they get a visual image of the page they were mm. studying mm. or maybe a visual picture of the teacher while he was teaching that. Mm. Okay. The other three people tend to get uh, the sound. So they remember the teacher well, while he was explaining mm. and saying the things he was saying. Mm. Or maybe they remember their own voice while they were uh, revising the topic they were studying. Mm. The can study. The can study, they just put the pen and it goes. Mm. So it's very similar to uh, if you have like a password that uh, mm. you have it, save it in your mind, but you don't, mm. you cannot say to someone, if someone mm. tells you what's my password, you say, can I get a key keyboard? Uh, uh, and is one, before we take a, a break, because this is very interesting, sure. is one of the three styles more, um, uh, uh, s more successful than, than the others? I mean, I mean mm -hmm. the, the group that belong, for instance, to the visual uh, uh, style of learning are they more successful than th those who not belong to the auditory or vice versa not necessarily visual mm. uh, usually are quicker mm. kinesthetic usually are sl slower but mm. at the same time they have the information much better than the uh, visual, the visual. Mm. what we tend to teach people is to use the three styles as much mm. as you can and to do and that have you ever thought of which st uh, group you belong to yeah i'm visual <laughs> okay it's the two of us yeah <laughs> and now now i can tell you which one of the three so um uh, uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, allow us to take a, a break here uh, and, and come back and continue this interesting discussion about the learning skills, the styles of learnings, the different types of uh, intelligence uh, uh, here on family issues. And again, we repeat, we all learn, uh, uh, we all keep learning uh, as long as uh, Allah is uh, granting us uh, life. Uh, so when we come back, we will try uh, uh, Dr. Tarot to talk more about the adults, maybe, and, uh, and give them a part of uh, our uh, uh, episode uh, as well. Uh, do stay with us, dear brothers and sisters. We'll be back momentarily. Salaamu Alaikum. You are never alone. You are never alone. Oh. Ask Hoda. Oh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Koda. I have two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and the interpretation of the meanings of the Quran 
uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Saleh from Egypt. His father has the way and he asked about how can he help him. Very good question. Can they give a zakat to any of the Dawah centers? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity of As everyone knows, today Arabic is considered as a very important, very significant language. How can we produce the sound, the state of voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation? So in Arabic, the words which are written are pronounced. We will learn how to write and pronounce Arabic letters correctly in depth, explanation, via board and presentation, with many other important factors. We have today more than 300 million people speak Arabic language. Not only in the Middle East, but you can find a lot of people speak Arabic language in Asia, Europe, North America, and in South America. What are you waiting for? Grab your notebook and pencil and stay tuned for Learn Arabic at Hoda TV. You are never alone. You are never alone. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once again. Um, Dr. Uh, Tor, um, again back to the uh, three styles uh, of learning. Uh, what is the best combination then, then uh, th that we can uh, form uh, mm -hmm. to help us uh, achieve, whether um, in an exam or uh, in, in our daily um, uh, jobs? Mm -hmm. Well, the best thing to do is to try to learn using the three styles. So even if I'm visual, I try to use the auditory and kinesthetic too. Um, and that's very important because many times the problem in school is my teacher is visual and I'm not visual. So if my teacher is, is visual um, and I'm kinesthetic, then there's a problem here. But if I train myself to use the three styles, then I'm flexible to do whatever I need to do to be able to uh, learn the things I need to do. Also, in case that I use the three styles and I forget what I learned using the visual, I still have two backups. So it's very useful to use the three styles. You can do that... Um, so the visual, when you start to, re to learn something, it's very important to make sure that you create a visual image for what you're learning. Uh, and you can actually do that for anything. Let's say you're learning history. You can actually imagine the, the history happening in front of you as if it's a movie. You're uh, imagining a battle and you're seeing uh, that character, in, uh, character doing that and you see that vividly in your mind. So by using the visual part and Im imagination, when you go back to the exam and you start to say, who was the person who did that? You'll get back the movie and you'll be able to uh, remember the name very easily. And, and to which group does most people, do most people belong? Well, you can say that the visual and kinesthetic are the top. Visual is a little bit more, but most people are between the visual and kinesthetic. Few right. people are auditory, uh, but you can use the three styles if you wish. Right. We, we said we'll talk about the types of, uh, of intelligence. I'm, I'm not sure the episode will be able to cover okay. uh, all of them in detail, but can you brief us on, um, on these different types and uh, mm -hmm. how should we deal with, how can we discover our talents, how can we discover our kids' talents, okay, how so to develop them? We have uh, many intelligence. Actually, the definition of intelligence now is that if you're good at something, then you're intelligent at that. So instead of the past where we had only one type of intelligence, uh, actually the IQ, uh, even the IQ is not one type. The IQ, as we will see now, it's actually two types. Uh, but now we have like unlimited number of intelligence. There's a series developed by Dr. Howard Gardner. He's a professor who did many uh, researches about intelligence, and he discovered seven main uh, areas for, of intelligence. The first one is uh, language, so linguistic. And this is one of the uh, intelligence that's measured in school, the language part. Mm. People who tend to have intelligent, uh, linguistic intelligence, they are able to use language uh, fluently. They are able to speak uh, easily. They are able to think in a way that's right and to say the right words when they need to do that. 
Okay, so that's the linguistic intelligence. Then we, we have the mass and logic intelligence. The mass and logic intelligence is obviously the te- second one measured in school. Right. So school usually measures uh, language and mass and logic. Mm-hmm. Okay, people who have the uh, mass and logic, they are uh, very logical when they are thinking. Uh, they are able to use numbers very easily. They can calculate, they multiply, divide, uh, subtract very easily. It's very natural for them to do that. That's the second type. Then we have the visual type of intelligent. Visual, uh, they are very good in drawing or imagining things. Uh, they are very good in imagining how things will turn uh, up later. So they have like the imagination. They can see something, they can see a stone, and they can see how they can turn that ugly stone into a beautiful uh, like decoration or something like that. Mm. Okay, So mm. they have this vision. Mm. So we had uh, the linguistic, then we had the math and, <coughs> the logic. Math and logic, then and we have the visual. visual, then we have the musical, music. Uh, he discovered that people who listen to music, certain kind of music or play certain kind of music, they are able to develop their intelligence too. Then we have what we call the interpersonal mm. inter- intelligence. Mm. The interpersonal, it's called the um, intelligence that deals with uh, others. Okay, so we have the inter and intrapersonal. Okay, we have two types of intelligence. Right. These types they measure the uh, ability of, of the person to understand himself, understand what he needs to do in his life, and how can I improve my life, how, what makes me happy, uh, what makes me sad, and what to do about it. And the other type is about how to deal with others. People who are very good, well, these types, we actually call them the EQ, mm. or the emotional intelligence. Mm. Okay. These type of intelligence, which is basically about how to deal with others, how to improve my relationship with others, how to understand their emotions and help them get the best they want to do. Yes. Then the last one we have is um, the physical intelligence. The physical intelligent people are who are very good using their body. So if your kid plays sports quite well, then they have the physical intelligence. If your kid are very accurate in doing crafts or doing uh, things like that, a surgeon, okay, uh, then the you'll be uh, have like very good in this area of uh, physical intelligence. Is it common that uh, we would own uh, um, types of intelligence that 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 we don't we we, we we end up not discovering in the end? Is that is that common? Uh, yeah. um, well, one of the rules of your mind is use it or lose it. Mm. So if I don't, if I have a skill that I, I'm born that I can do quite well, but I don't do that skill, it will go away. Um, it will not go away completely, but it will not be uh, as good as the things I'm practicing. So it's very important for me to practice the things I want to improve. Even... Um, things that I'm not quite well or quite good at, if I keep uh, developing and practicing, I can actually uh, develop that kind of intelligence much better than someone who got that naturally and he was not using it or practicing it. Mm-hmm. So it's very important when it comes to mind to use this rule, use it or lose it. Mm. Always try to use your mind. Always try to improve uh, the way you think. The way. Uh, so, for example, if I'd like to improve the mass and logic, Instead of using the calculator to uh, calculate very simple numbers, many people now do that, and persons sometimes do that. Uh, you get the, out the, uh, your mobile phone and use the calculator to calculate very simple numbers. What you're doing here is you're not using your mind. If you tend to not use your mind for a while, then your mind tends to stop working in this area. Mm-hmm. So try as much as you can to use your mind when you, when you want to improve something. Mm-hmm. The same applies to all the areas. Well, I will never f- forget what my, my math teacher uh, told me <laughs> why, when I was in high school. And one of those days, I, I forgot my calculator. So mm-hmm. I told him, I'm not taking the exam because I forgot the calculator. Mm-hmm. So he told me, and what about your head? Did you lose it at home or is it with you here in, in class? I told him it's here. So he said, work, do, do the exam. <laughs> and I did the exam and I did very well. So, um, yeah. And I never forgot that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not about the calculator. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's because your mind is much better than calculators. Actually, there are techniques and ways now that we teach kids to do uh, calculations that computer takes uh, minutes to calculate, and they do that in less time than the, cal- uh, the calculator and the computer. Subhanallah. So kids, if they are trained, and others too, they can do that. If they are trained and they focus and they start to use their minds, your mind is much better than the most powerful computer. And I personally believe it will be much more powerful than the best computer will be able to develop 
uh, during this world. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. It's it's Allah's uh, creation um, after all. Um, uh, Doctor Tar, what about the memories? The different types of memories and how we can um, uh, improve. Um, the, the efficiency of our memories. Sometimes you you find people tell you, um, I, I, I forgot. I, I usually tend to forget things that happened yesterday or the day before. But the mm -hmm. the, the so-called selective memory. But they remember things that happened 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the vice uh, case. So, um, well, that tends to happen because um, I. I I prefer to ask the opposite question. So people ask me, how do I remember? I ask them, how do you forget? Mm. So because when I learn something, it's here in my mind. For me to forget it, I have to do something to forget it. And that's actually what we're doing. When I'm in stress, I'm not in a good state for learning. Actually, stress is one of the best enemies for your mind, especially in the part of memory. If you're in a very stressful situation, something can happen and you can totally forget about, what, uh, about that. Actually, in life, you can be... Maybe um, it's because you want to forget? Sometimes, yes. Mm. So if we go back, if you're linking studying to pain, what happens here is very interesting. Your mind will tell you, don't worry, I'll let you forget all that pain, I'll let you forget all what you studied, and then you go to your exam and your mind is blank. Mm. So it's very important to start, uh, to make sure that when you're starting, you're starting in a positive state, as, as we discussed, as discussed before. So this is one area. Something else to make sure that you're not stressed and uh, the food you're eating. There are three things that's very negative for your food for when the you memory. eat. Yeah, sugar, salt, and uh, flour, white flour. Oh my God! So, uh, so I have zero memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, students uh, they have this misconception where they take chocolate before they go to exam mm. because they, it will give them energy. That's true for a while. When you take sugar or any kind of um, processed sugar that's not natural, what happens is you get a lot of energy for a few minutes, then it goes down very quickly. So you have high energy, then you go very down, mm. uh, very quickly down. Mm. So I actually, testify to that. Yeah, actually mm. we uh, encourage students to stay away from uh, unnatural sources of sugar mm. and at the same time salt. Salt, um, the problem of salt is it raises your tension level. So it actually adds, adds to your stress. So stay away from salt. At the same time of white, uh, white flour. So instead of eating like brown flour, the one that's very useful, uh, full of uh, nutrition that's uh, useful for my body, the white flour is basically what they do is they take the useful stuff out, they throw it out, and then they give you something that's not useful for yourself or your body. So mm -hmm. stay away from that. Uh, another tip is make sure that you're focusing because many times I ask people uh, when they tell me how uh, to remember, I ask them, did you focus quite well at the beginning before you started to learn? Many times they say no. Mm. So uh, there's a simple trick or some uh, questions that I'd like to ask people when, when they are were talking about the memory. Tell them, do you know which, uh, what is the color? Uh, so in the street when they ha you have uh, a traffic light. So, so what's the color of the first one? Okay, so many people will, will know the answer, but I find that many people, they are not quite sure what's the color. Is it red? Is it uh, green? Mm. Is it uh, mm. yellow? They are not quite sure. Mm. And they see the traffic light, they see it many, many, many times mm. uh, each day. Mm. And at the same time, they don't remember because they don't focus on that. Mm. Are they lazy people? They are not lazy. They are just mm. focusing their attention on something else. Mm. So, for example, uh, I always like to ask that question. Um, on your watch... So, do you have like Arabic numbers, uh, Latin numbers, English numbers, or just dots? Do you know that? Many people, they don't know that. Mm. And the next, uh, so I tell them, take a look and see mm. what do you have in your watch. Mm. And they look at their watch and say, ah, I have Latin numbers. Mm. Okay. After they do that, I tell them, so what time is it now? They didn't notice that. Mm. So the main problem is actually concentrating. Mm. Right. Many, many of us are concentrating on mm. other things than we mm. need to concentrate on. Right. So I'm studying, but at the same time, I'm concentrating about what I'll be doing tomorrow when I'm going out. Mm. What I'll be doing later when, uh, if, if uh, like it's a housewife, uh, what I'm going to be cooking later. Mm. So the main thing to do is here to focus mm. on what I'm currently doing. Mm -hmm. There's a very simple technique to do that, is to focus my eye my eyes on, on the middle. Actually, there's this point where we tell people to try to find this point, a spot on the wall where you look. Your eyes have to be a little bit up. 
and you're at the same time you're looking in the middle mm. okay you don't have to use your fingers so for example i'm, I'm looking right mm. now at that point mm. and do that for like half a minute or a minute and at the same time i'm noticing what's on my right and what's on my left i do that for half a minute or a minute then i go back to focus on what i want to do mm. what i did here is uh, i got the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere to focus on one point so my constitution is very very high concentration the key word indeed subhanallah concentration concentrate um uh, dr tar i have a feeling that we would need more episodes uh, to talk about the different types of intelligence and the different types of uh, memories mm -hmm. and, and and how to uh, to develop them it's been a great pleasure uh, having you with us you. here we also want to talk about the adults mm -hmm. uh, learning skills and definitely there would be some um um, differences or some uh, spreads. Actually, most of to what we said applies to adults. And mm. one of the tips or tricks uh, that I would say, say to adults to do is to act as if you're a kid when you're learning. All right. How beautiful. On that note, uh, dear brothers and sisters, we end this episode of Family Issues. We thank on behalf of you, Dr. Muhammad Tar, personal development coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. And wish to see you again uh, here. Um, uh, and uh, dear brothers and sisters, thank you for watching uh, Family Issues. Uh, until we meet again, same time next week, inshallah. Stay healthy. May Allah protect you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alone. You were never alone Through sorrow and through grief Through happiness and peace You were never alone So now, as you long for your past Prepare for your future But knowing nothing's gonna last You see this life is but a road, a straight and narrow path to our final abode. So travel well, O oh Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And all 